Hey, good morning. Welcome to the 5 a.m. Master Scrum Show. Boy, it's a late morning for me. I think the holiday's getting to me. I don't know about you all, but I'm kind of getting caught up into it. Bubbles is in here. I just triggered off one of their Christmas toys, and she's in heart stole my sweatshirt. <laughs> I had a sweatshirt on, or a sweater. And here's Bubbles. Hi, Bubbles. You want to say hi to everyone? Do you want to say hi, Bubbles? Come here. Let's say hi to me, big, big girl. She's here. She's like, oh, dad's in my spot. Anyway, I want to um, wish everyone a happy holiday and hopefully get to enjoy a little bit of holiday break here in the States and anywhere in the world that's coming up this weekend. And I um, want to do a fun Friday. We haven't done a fun Friday in a while. And I figured it would be good. I wanted to do a little research. That's why we're a little bit late. I wanted to do a little more research and supply some data related to having fun and learning and growing as a team. And to, and, and we also have a fortune cookie Friday, so we're going to do a fortune cookie. But the little research will go over this. We uh, did a little look in the Lego Foundation from the kids' perspective and learning and growing, joy, being joyful, actively engaging, meaningful, socially interactive, and iterative is something they found that if you want to do some fun learning activities, it should kind of encompass this. We're going to talk about that a little bit on designing fun activities for your team and what you're doing. And I'm wearing my tie-dye short sleeve shirt in the middle of winter. It's kind of crazy, but, you know, it's kind of fun. Uh, I saw it, and I'm like, hey, you know, I don't want to wear that today. I usually wear a sweater over top of it. But somebody named Hart sat on my sweater, so I don't have it right now. So anyway, it's 5 a.m. Master Scrum Show. I am Greg Master, Scrum Master and Agile Coach. And here we talk about Scrum and Agile in a very practical and tactical way so you can bring value to your customer without working extra hours to get that value and have a little fun along the way. And today's our Fun Friday because the whole fun part, um, I think it's important that people do have fun working together and that's not all stress. I mean, we have a stressful job. It's stressful out there. And I think sometimes like blowing off some steam with a little fun is a good thing in the office. And to have the freedom and the safety and the trust to be allowed to do that just spawns off all kinds of thought processes in people's brains. There's lots of studies out there on what kind of fun, what contributes the most. But the reason why I say to do it is I, I think it, I think it helps people understand each other a little better. I think from my experience, it builds a level of trust with the company that it's okay to let loose a little bit. It's okay to, take the foot off the pedal a little bit and the world won't come down on you when you do, because otherwise we just create a big stress ball in the work environment, right? You got to let them have that freedom that it think about it. You got to think about it deeper than all. Oh, they're just playing a game. They're just playing a little foosball. They're just playing a little wordle maybe on a, in a week or, or maybe they're doing some scavenger hunts. We'll talk about that. I'll talk about a design of a scavenger hunt a little bit. Um, that I've done in the past and give you a little twist today on how to design something that takes these principles that the Lego Foundation talked about for kid learning into what you do. Um, so let's, let's dive right into it. So I do believe what I said about having fun a little bit and this fun Friday, we're going to talk a little bit of fun, show you how to do one, but just want to bring some data. So there's lots of data out there. Um, you just, if you really want the research, there's data on how, what kind of fun learning, how to, what fun learning should be about adults, slightly different than kids, but you know what? We all like to be kids too. I don't know how many times we played Wordle when I was on one team and it was this little competitive thing. Now that gets the flow moving, the motivation, the challenging, the, the adrenaline and it breaks a lot of stuff. It doesn't necessarily um, build the proactive team or the learning environment playing Wordle, though you do expand your mind. Um, but it does, it's fun to laugh and enjoy. And if we can't laugh and enjoy, it's not good. So one of the recommendations, my son actually asked like, what kind of games can I play with the kids in the technology class? And, and, and Eddie actually recommended Wordle because I want to build a competition for people to go and work, you know, maybe the whole class. I had to see if it can work. And this is part of the setup for the event. If it works for you. And like, I have to make sure it works on all the computers. Same thing you have to do. So let's look at what the Lego foundation had to say a little bit. So they said the activity should be joyful. There's nothing like the endorphins and all the neurons and everything that gets 
activated when you have a fun game, whether there are studies that they're playing Halo and video games. And I know one big company, the whole team would sit up in the front of one of the big screens that they would use for their development and meetings and play a video game to, you know, team based video games, active engagement, kind of like the same way. Meaningful is different for uh, um, what we do. And I think we should mix it up between meaningful detailed direct meaning to what we do and a little fun but you need some meaningful because they're like well we're just screwing around having you know just doing stuff not related so you need to relate some of your activities related social interactive where the whole team gets to be interactive and iterative where they help you grow it and improve it and i like to apply new knowledge to what what they're learning in games and stuff like that so one of the things i like to do um, uh, here's an example. Let's talk about this. So maybe a scavenger hunt. Maybe you have a development team and it's scrum is big on knowing what your customer sees and stuff like that. So maybe this takes a little bit more time for a scrum master to do. Every company has a website, right? No matter where you work for, go on the website, search for things, find clues, find little items, make a little scavenger hunt. So everyone goes surfs the company website surfs the product offering to the customer, right? Maybe they learn meaningful a little bit what products we can offer. What does it look like for a customer, right? I mean, you search for actively engaging. You have a time set, you know, they have to find so many things. Maybe you look for teams. Maybe they team up together and split up where they would go. Maybe they have find like breadcrumbs. Maybe there's clues like it would be in the, you know, boots are made for walking or you make a little clue like, um, what was it? One song. Um, I don't know. You could have like Christmas boots or something like what would you buy? Or you can say it's a flat, you know, there's things you can do on the site. You can make little hints and then that maybe you have smaller teams get together and they figure out what the hint means. And then you say, and it's red or something. And then they find something on that website that's red or blue or it says, you know, jewel, whatever, whatever it would be, pull that out of the website, but you have to set all this up in advance and make some teams. Um, maybe you just make it to teams and declare who's on the team so they get to know each other. Um, but mix it up also. I think it's also okay to have fun a little bit. Just non-meaningful, not learning, not putting a pressure cooker, just releasing steam. So maybe games like Wordle or we used to play the squirrel game sometimes. Um, uh, who knows? You can play all kinds of things. But so those are some of the ideas that I give you, like a scavenger hunt on the website. It helps, and you say the goal. And the goal is like to get more knowledge about the website and the customer base, to understand what products go. Go see how it's running on the other side. We're so involved in the code, deep into that. Sometimes we don't get to see what's on the other side of what we create. So that's kind of fun. And I actually might do that with the, the team in the new year a little bit more, get them more corporate knowledge of how the system looks on the other side and um, give them a place and maybe build some little teams, smaller teams, little groups of teams that they can team up to try to solve the riddles, make some riddles, right? So you lay all this out, you bring it up, but you try to cover all these bases, something fun, actively engaging, meaningful, Iterative, maybe they can grow it next time. Maybe, maybe do a retrospective on it and how you might change the activity um, and make it socially interactive where everyone's interactive from a whole group from the team, right? So it provides that interactive activity. And um, you got to do prep, make sure the bosses know who's doing it. I did one years ago, I wanted to do where when we were in the office. We actually went out, and met people. So now I think that would be the awesome thing. So all these companies that require people to come in on certain days, maybe on those days you do a scavenger hunt where you're interacting with people, with customers, and they go meet with those customers as part of the scavenger hunt, right? So, and that way you get to know them. Who, what's, what's the face to the name? I mean, other than doing Zoom, where they sit, where's their office? You know, maybe go and if you have 
one company has warehousing. Maybe they go visit one of the uh, people works in the warehouse, you know, stuff like that, that just builds up that uh, capability and knowledge of the company, because that's a big thing that we have in Scrum and Agile Coding is knowing the customer, right? So you make it meaningful, make it direct. I think you can do it. There's more. I just gave a couple ways where if you come in the office, do a scavenger hunt where you meet people, meet your customer, meet your stakeholders, right? If it's wholly remote, you can design something where you can do a scavenger hunt on a website of the company with riddles and have little small teams and do that kind of thing. So there's a couple of things using what Lego foundations wrote for kid learning that apply directly to adult learning, keeping those thoughts. So if you're going to do some fun, look at that, but I also think it's okay to mix it up. I really do believe spending a half hour a week as a team, just to, to blow off steam, play some video games together. They say it doesn't help um, inter interactive teaming per se with the video games but it does help motivate and have the teams and the people um do more work right so it does there's some studies out there um that are available anyway so with that let's go on fortune cookie friday i do have a fortune cookie i had a fortune cookie last time we did i was going to take a picture and put it on uh, on i still have the i still have the message but the cookie's missing somebody that was in the early part of the show was a cookie thief because the whole entire cookie is gone. I think somebody went on my desk and found a cookie and ate it. Who do you think ate the cookie? It's this one. It's Bubbles. She loves fortune cookies. Don't ask me why. She has a sweet tooth. So this fortune cookie is from the Agile Accountants. They drop off a message, whatever the message is we try to apply to Agile. And now here's another example. Here's something that's fun. You can give out fortune cookies. You can say, hey, whatever the message, how does this apply to work, what we're doing? So you make it meaningful, related to what we do, just to have a little fun. So not only just giving out fortune cookies, but you make a challenge in there. Okay, relate whatever comes out of the fortune cookie with what you do, right? So let's see what the Agile accountants have to say today on this fun Friday, Fortune Cookie Friday. And of course, she's waking up. She's like, I smell the cookie. <laughs> Excuse me. Facts are cheap. Information is plentiful. Knowledge is precious. Facts are cheap. Information is plentiful. Knowledge is precious. So basically, anybody can get facts. Like I can get the the... Um, Lego Foundation, maybe some data studies and stuff. Information is plentiful. There's lots of information on the internet on why fun and having a little fun as a team is a better team motivator. But knowledge is precious. Doing it, having it, experiencing it, I can, I can say how much fun, but until you do, the knowledge of actually doing that is more valuable, more precious. And as I said, it's a great way. I see teams that benefit from that. I do see that bonding that can't be put in metrics that happen. They're not measurable, but you can see just the ability to interact with people is much better when they break down those barriers and have a little fun together. So with that, I want to say have a great day. Happy holidays. Happy scrumming. I wish you all the best. And, um, the new year 2024 is going to be crazy. We got a, we got a whole nother week of show before we even get to 2024. So we got one more week left, left here in 2023. And I'm looking forward to being on the show and sharing with you. So with that, I want to say have a great weekend. Enjoy. Have some fun. Take care, everyone. Bye. And say bye, Bubbles. Bye, Bubbles.